But let's move on now to the top 10 of these point guard rankings. Let's run through them. Kemba Walker coming in at 10. Mike Conley coming in at 9. Kyle Lowry coming in at 8. Damian Lillard coming in at 7. Coming in at 6 is Kyrie Irving. Coming in at 5, Isaiah Thomas. Coming in at 4, Chris Paul. Coming in at 3, John Wall. Coming in at 2, Russell Westbrook. And coming in at number 1, Steph Curry. So let's talk about the top real quick because Russell Westbrook even though he won the MVP, is not the number one point guard. Dave, you put him at number one. Make the I, case for him. I may have put him at number one. Dave he likes did. triple doubles. The man <laughs> had the most triple doubles in a season he in did. NBA history, something that hasn't been done. He outdid Oscar Robertson. But this isn't, about, big o. This isn't mm-hmm. about last season. This is going into this season. Uh, and and where do you judge last season? He he was that good last season with crap around him, and now you get Paul George in there. Go look at what the Warriors did in the finals. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> Steph Curry was a big part of that. Steph Curry's good. He's really good. He's he is good. good. He's I, good at basketball. I'm just saying the argument is there because Russell Westbrook contributes more to his team than Steph Curry does. Everything that Steph Curry does. He was the team last year. Yeah, yeah. It, it might as well have been the Oklahoma but City. who would you rather have leading that team? Steph Curry. Who would you rather have? Who would do, you rather? do you think Steph Curry's more successful on that team than Russell Westbrook? Because I'd argue against that. What do you mean? I, I think that if you literally picked up, removed Westbrook from that team... Put Steph Curry on the team. Steph Curry's never going to average a triple double because he doesn't. I don't board. even say. Wait, are we, put, double. are we putting saying... Steph Curry on the Thunder or yeah, Westbrook yeah. on the Warriors? No, no, Thunder. Okay, just just him on the Thunder. I don't think he wins a championship, but I don't no. think do, he becomes. Do you, do you think they win garbage. as many games? Do you think that he puts up uh, close to a stat line? No. I would uh, say I would say you look at his 2015, 2016 season, 2014, 2015 season. And he's still the greatest three point shooter in NBA history. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I absolutely agree to that. I'm just saying Russell Westbrook's contributions to his team. Are greater than what Steph Curry contributes to his team. That, in my mind, are we, in, are we talking about this pure value, Warriors or just the in general? Because Curry's a great leader still. Yeah, yeah, he, he he's great. You Steph know, Curry's so, so great, are the other three All Stars on the team. Yeah, Steph Curry, which okay, his role, but even before was able that, to get even a before contract. that, the contract I'm just that saying. he just got. Yep. Don't see Russell Westbrook getting that money. He literally just got that money. Did he get more than Steph Curry? Uh, I don't know the official. I don't know the numbers. Which one? I are just know the last year's the Westbrook to Curry. Well, Steph got more because it was the Supermax. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Russ didn't have the chance to sign the Supermax. Yeah. So I, I bet if Russ had the chance to sign the Supermax, he would have signed the fucking Supermax. <laughs> Come on. Um, and you would have signed him the Supermax because it's Russell Westbrook. Exactly. That's We're a, picking that's hairs here, but still, looking at Steph, you look at what he was able to do even before Kevin Durant mm-hmm. came. He was a two-time MVP. He's the best three-point shooter in the league. Uh, one of those MVPs was, you know, unanimous, too. You got you to gotta just add a little... One I'm of top. them was unanimous. There you go. Russ's wasn't I knew, unanimous. I, I knew he was Russ's thinking Russ's wasn't <laughs> unanimous, and he averaged triple-double. Yep. You know who's actually the player in this top ten that I think needs to be the focal point? Is it Mike Conley? No, it's not Mike Conley, even uh, though he just stayed the same. pretty sure it's, it's Mike Isaiah Conley. Thomas. Because he's I, the I was high, not expecting he, that. Well, he's the hot. You, <laughs> you look at last year's rankings this year, he, ri- he rises five spots to be our fifth overall player, and it's kind of a player. I had him at three. However, if you've heard me talk about Isaiah Thomas, he's not going to win a championship. He's also not Boston the best player. Boston should probably he, train him. He's not even the best player on his team. Because he's not you're not going to win a championship with him on there. He's yeah. not even the best point guard in the East. But the type of play that we saw, like Dave said, how do you grade? He meant this season, but he said last season. Yeah. How do you grade this season? You have to go with last season. Yeah. And last season, Isaiah Thomas, yeah, I know he got hurt at the end and was out for most uh, for the rest of that Cleveland series, but he played phenomenal. I mean, look at Damian Lillard. He was a guy we were all high on last year. Yeah. Fell three spots this year. Yeah, he's still in the top ten, but he's not as high. Is Isaiah Thomas going to be that same kind of guy? Last season, now he rises, and then he falls again I mean, this year. I think he's probably going to fall a little bit, but then again, you mm-hmm. also have to look at how weak the East got. So, I mean, that's going to yeah, yeah, play East in lost factor a couple as well. Stars. Um, do I think he's going to be able to put up 28 points per game? No, he just or, or mm-hmm. 29, really. I mean, he averaged 28.9, yeah. so we'll run it up to 29. But then again, Gordon Hayward came over, so that might take away, you know, scoring. Oh, it's going to take away scoring from Isaiah Thomas. And Isaiah Thomas isn't that much of a playmaker. He isn't a guy that's going to have the ball in his hands. A lot of those points came off of. The uh, off of screens. I mean, he's going to have. I was the ball say, in his it was hands. clearly off of screens. He's like gonna, he dominated. Gonna, he obviously, has the ball in his hands. Obviously, he brings the the ball up, but most of his scoring is made off of screens. Yes, he drives a little bit too. But I mean, you look at Isaiah Thomas. He's in a guy like a John Wall, Chris Paul. I mean, who Chris John Paul Wall is now our players. third point guard. Well, and that's yeah. one thing you had Isaiah Thomas over John Wall. So why mm-hmm. was that? Well, for me, I looked at it, and for that, it was basically a Isaiah Thomas led his team to. 
the number one overall seed were John Wall and that team. Like, it was kind of a, the Celtics did better, so Isaiah Thomas's team did Gets better than John Wall. However, I will say, I was wrong about John Wall heading into last year. I didn't think the Wizards were going to be a top four playoff team heading into last season. However, they were, and they did get to the playoffs, and they were in the top four. And that really, for me, the guy who I see got bumped in mind the most is the guy who we have at four, Chris Paul, because of Isaiah Thomas, because of John Wall, and me even having Kyrie one slot ahead of Chris Paul. Well, and looking at Chris Paul, too, I mean, you know, taking all the— Well, Dave, do you want to jump in on the, the Isaiah Thomas-John I mean, Wall thing? The, the one last thing for Isaiah Thomas, like, I, I, I agree John Wall is the better point guard. I think Sean and I are on the same page on that. But Isaiah Thomas, the thing that, like, even the stat line showed us was mm-hmm. his fourth-quarter impact. Like, for a guy who lives off of his pure quickness, beating people off the screens and getting to the hoop— and creating contact, yeah, I know he flops like crazy, but still, he gets the calls, and that's all that matters at the and end of the day. And he steps over the line taking foul and shots. And he also cheats on his foul shots. <laughs> Not enough disrespect <laughs> possible. But, look, he his fourth quarter like was just magical every mm-hmm. single time because no matter what the score was, you're like, they got a shot, unless it was against Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, one thing that I want to point out here, too, is is you look at this, I mean, we, we, we had a lot of differences. You had Russ over Steph. You had Isaiah Thomas over John mm-hmm. Wall. I had Kyrie over Isaiah Thomas. So, is it, it, I mean, we, we have obviously, you know, similar differences here. You look at Isaiah Thomas, I think he's going to take a, a dip mm-hmm. in his production, obviously, because Gordon Hayward comes over. Right. But also, I just look at Kyrie Irving and then also the possibility of him being traded. And I still look at Kyrie as one of the most dangerous scorers, the one of the best ball handlers in the NBA, playing with LeBron James. I still think that Isaiah Thomas, or, I mean, Kyrie Irving is a better player. You also look at Isaiah mm-hmm. Thomas defensively. He's not that great, but then again, when we're talking about all these guys, we're splitting hairs between yeah. these people. So I mean, well, honestly, like, is there any clear, clear, like, you know, one over the other that you would look at and say, you know, this is where the 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 talent really starts to separate in no, the top ten? No, like, and I think it's clear of yes, like one and two are clear, and I'm gonna use air quotes because yes, there are gonna be the minority that say, you know what, I'm going to put Russell Westbrook above Steph Curry. Yep. But I think the majority of people are going to go Steph Russ. Yeah, absolutely. Then after that, it's a crapshoot. Some people are going to like Isaiah Thomas. Some are going to like John Wall. Some will like Kyrie. Some will like Chris Paul. There might be some people that say, hey, I like Kyle Lowry more than any of those and might put him higher because of what he brought to And they're from his Toronto. Raptors team. Yeah, they're yeah. from Toronto. He's from the North. but No, the, they are. The Anyone thing, who would put him that high. The thing I wanted to kind of look at in that sense is if I look back to last year, last year I had, yet again, Steph and Russ. But who was my third? Kyrie Irving. Because yet, it might have been because they were coming off of the championship and mm-hmm. he hit the final shot in that. But I kind of feel like these – trade talks or these trade rumors, trade demands have kind of hurt Kyrie in a sense of, yeah, you play with LeBron James, so of course you don't have to do everything. In a sense of, if you put Kyrie on his own, let's say on a Phoenix, let's say Mm -hmm. on a Sacramento, on a Brooklyn, is he going to be the third best point guard behind Steph and Russ? I still think so. If you put him on Brooklyn, let's say Brooklyn, because to me they are the lowest of the low in this league. Ouch. When it comes to talent wise, that's nothing against you. That's just being honest. I disagree. Is he a top? Th- is he the top third point guard behind Steph and Russ? Yeah, I, I think he's. I think he's like. I, I still have him bouncing between like six. I think between six and three, and I don't think mm-hmm. that he can get above. John, in my mind, John Wall's there because he's a two-way player. Yeah. John Wall gives you— John Wall's also a better facilitator I'd than Kyrie Irving. Excellent facilitator, great mm-hmm. basketball IQ, lightning quick, and, and just amazingly good court vision. Kyrie doesn't play defense. Like, he half-asses defense. That's, yeah. that's the best you'll get. It's it's better than Isaiah Thomas for joking around purely because he's taller. He mm-hmm. has a longer wingspan. He takes up more space. Like, that's our reasoning. That I mean, it's it's terrible to joke well, about. But. And, and one thing, too, I mean, you look at Kyrie and you look at John Wall and Damian Lillard, guys that aren't on really talented teams. I mean, obviously Bradley Beal's there. CJ McCollum's I... there. But you look at those teams, I mean, they're, they're the re- I mean. Ultimately, John Wall and Damian Lillard are the best players on those those teams, yep. mm-hmm. and it's not even close. Where you look at Chris Paul, he's got James Harden. You look at Kyrie Irving, he's got LeBron James. You look at Isaiah Thomas, he's got Gordon Hayward. You look at Russ, 
Russ, obviously the complete you know outlier here. Uh, well, now you have now Paul George. Now he has Paul George. Yeah, yeah Paul George. Got. And before that, you even had Kevin Durant. And then you look at Steph, he's Who's got that? 19 Hall of Famers on his team. So Who's that? <laughs> ultimately, <laughs> I, I just think that you know Kyrie would still be up there even if you put him on a Brooklyn. If you put mm-hmm. him on a, you know, a floundering team like Phoenix or you know whoever you want to use as an example, yeah. um, I still think he'd be higher than you know Kyle Lowry, Kemba Walker, just because... Yeah, to me, that separation just kind of happens at like Kyle Lowry's level. Like I feel like... I would say the Damian Lillard, Mike Connolly, that's where mm-hmm. you have that separation between the top 10 where those the guys below Damian Lillard, those guys are never going to be in conversation for MVP. They're just fantastic. Pro- I, I would agree with you there. Yeah, I think Dame is kind of the cutoff because he there's something special about him. Yeah. And, and we've watched it for the last couple of years, and yeah, I wish his team was healthier so that series would have been actually, uh, you know, more, more enjoyable, more exciting. Well, here's the thing you brought. You mentioned how, like, oh, well, Dame and John Wall are alike because it's Dame and CJ, but also you have John Wall and Bradley Beal. However, maybe it's just me. I look at it, and if you said, who's the guy who is, like, they don't need the number two more than the other one, John Wall to me is the one where I can take Bradley Beal away and put someone else in, and it's someone else of, like, okay, quality. It's not going to be Bradley Beal, but it's someone, and John Wall can still be John Wall. With Damian Lillard, I kind of feel like some of the trailblazers, it's like, man, would this team uh, be a little bit less wins? Would it be a little bit less off if he didn't have CJ being the Robin next to him? I don't know about that. I, th- I think because, I mean, obviously we really don't know because CJ came in like right when LaMarcus left. So we really don't know mm-hmm. what, what he would do by his own or by himself because we've seen what John Wall was able to do without Bradley Beal mm-hmm. because we obviously saw that Bradley Beal's been injured like pretty much most of his career. But yeah, looking, yeah. At, looking at those two, I think that Dame is a, a, clearly a better scorer than John Wall. So, you know, they're completely two different players in the sense that John Wall can do everything for you. Dame can put up 30 a night and and, and consistently do that. So I think they're different players where Dame doesn't need that Robin next to him, Mm -hmm. where if you put a phenomenal Robin next to John Wall, that's when John Wall ascends to the Mm -hmm. next level. So I think that's why you also see John Wall higher than Dame right now because that's why John Wall took up three spots. Dame fell three spots was because you saw the addition of Bradley Beal what that added to John Wall. A healthy Bradley Beal. I say yeah. healthy Bradley Beal, the growth of Otto Porter mm-hmm. and, and consistency of their their starting unit was one of the best in the league. Their bench was the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, John Wall's impact when he's off the floor, his, the plus minus is ridiculous to look at. So mm-hmm. again, it, it's his impact across the whole team. And I think that's kind of one of those interesting things to look at because, you know, we, we talked about before Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan, kind of that pairing because it seems like a lot of these guards have excellent backcourts together, mm-hmm. and we got to watch the Raptors, you know, first without Lowry, then without uh, DeRozan, and kind of see, like, you know, how does this play out if one or the other is missing? And, like, the argument was there still. is as efficient, as good of a shooter as DeMar was. Like, Lowry's still more valuable to the team in, in a lot of people's minds. So I, I think the problem with him is his age and, like, their window, and mm-hmm. that that's where it just kind of sucks for Lowry because, like, I think he's a good player. He's a weird aberration in the NBA. He got better, you know, past 25, mm-hmm. which normally we see players usually, you know, the the prime area mm-hmm. is 25 to 27. We see them kind of hit, this is where I'm topping out at. And, like, he just kept getting better after that. So it's amazing what he's done, but now the concern is, like, I don't know that he's got anything left because he's, he's hit post-prime almost in my mind. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, like, how, how this all plays out, because then again, you know, we look at John Wall, what's going to happen if Bradley Beal goes down, what's going to happen with Chris Paul, you know, playing now next to jo- uh, James Harden. That one, I think, is most interesting, because, I mean, you went from me, who was, I was I was fighting for James Harden to be the point guard, the number one point guard mm-hmm. last year, I mm-hmm. think, and, and this year, it's like, okay, now we've got Chris Paul there, who, obviously, we know what he was able to do with a big and DeAndre Jordan, Blake Griffin, working mm-hmm. with them, too, so him... Now being in the Mike D'Antoni offense, I think like he's got a huge smile on his face. Like it's gonna be perfect for him. So do you think that Chris Paul can actually take a jump up? Because he fell down one spot. I think he benefits from it, but I, I don't know like the the problem there is just I don't know how much the, the points will matter because it is D'Antoni offense. I do expect them to again put up like hundred and fifteen a night, hundred and twenty. Like well, I don't know if that almost waters let, down the case. Let's be honest. Chris Paul fell this year because of me and Dave. Last yeah. year, how we had it was you guys had him at three, I had him at four. Yep. This year, Sean kept him at three, 
Dave, you actually put him at four. I bumped him down to six, mainly Ooh. because of in mine how he got bumped down to six was Isaiah and John Wall jumped up to three four. So obviously you're gonna fall from your spot. Why do you take, when two guys bump in? Why do you take Kyrie over Chris Paul? That was the one where it was to me back to back, and with Chris Paul and Kyrie, yes, Chris Paul is better defensively than Kyrie. By a mile. But if you told me, Ricky, you got to pick one of these point guards, kind of like the situation you said, you've got same situation, same team for each one. Who do you want your point guard to be? I want Kyrie Irving because if I want, you know what, games on the line and I need a final shot, I'd go with Kyrie over Chris Paul. Yeah, I mean, slightly. He, he's got it. He's proven it. And he, I mean, Chris Paul had a big shot once. Chris yeah, I know, Paul, that's why I, I said mean, slightly. Hey, I, but but also, what round does Chris Paul get stuck on? The second round. Yeah. But is that his fault or is that the fact that Blake Griffin is, is a walking injury? <laughs> Same with DeAndre Jordan. And I mean, Chris Paul also gets team. banged up. Look, uh, I love Chris Paul. I will just say the the I've been saying the same shit over, mm-hmm. and I know you guys are sick of it. But twenty twenty zero, twenty points, twenty assists, zero turnovers. Why do you take That's John insane. Wall over Chris Paul? Because I put Chris Paul three. You put John Wall above Chris Paul. I, I think that John Wall has he's another, younger. Well, you it, also say it's that. it's the age thing. Is it, is it because it he's feels more like the easy flashy? way out? But I think no, I don't even want to say flashy. I think it's I mean, the Kyrie, way he works with his team. Because Kyrie and John Wall would be to me more flashy than Chris Paul. I, I think for me, it's the way he works within his team because I don't know how Chris Paul is going to work with Houston. Mm-hmm. I mean, on paper, this should work perfectly. He gets to be a spot up three point shooter, an excellent facilitator, and like this is all about just chucking up threes all day and working with your big man on high efficiency shots mm-hmm. down low. On paper, it works. I'm a little bit afraid of that. I'm curious to see how the James Harden experiment, bouncing from point guard back not. Are they going to split time with the ball in their hands? That's where I have a question. Like, It's nothing against Chris Paul. It's more of a fit on his team. John Wall staying, again, like I said, one of the best starting units in the league, and nothing's changing. They're keeping everything. They're just going to continue to get better. Bradley Beal, one of the most efficient twos in the game, and I think John Wall can still continue to get better. Like, mm-hmm. It's crazy to say about him. Like, He's not done growing. Yeah, and, and let's get a, a little bit out of the, the top seven because I, I I understand where you're coming from. Again, like we said, we're nitpicking. Yeah, with I mean, this top again, seven. these are these are hairs, you yeah. know. And, and and let's jump into uh, Kyle Lowry, Mike Conley, and Kevin Walker because we haven't given him any love at all. Mike mm-hmm. Conley probably is the most underrated Mike player. Conley. I'd say like out he's of a this pretty group. good player. I think that's uh, that's an accurate he's, description. He's a good player. He's pretty I good. mean, you look at what he does in the playoffs. You look at what he did last year. He's a guy that puts up twenty a night, and he's also able to put together great teams, is able to bring his team together, and he's a guy that is not going to hurt your team in any facet of the uh, you know facet of the court. He's a guy that's going to be able to score inside. He's going to be a guy that scores from the outside. He's an efficient free throw shooter. He's a gr- good defender. He's going to be able to create for his team. I mean, I, you know I, I look I at my comment, he does with, everything. What you know what I didn't? find funny with him, though? What? Last year, coming into 2016, we all had him at 9. Now, he stays the same this year. We all what, had him at 9? But we didn't. You had him at eight. I kept him at nine. Dave bumped him down to ten. But he stayed at nine. He stayed at nine. But you guys went, Mr. Nah, Consistency, up and, up, and I went right in the same. Why'd you put Kemba Walker over him? I, I I think Kemba is more of a like. I just like the way Kemba plays. His play style statistically might not be better than Mike Conley, but I think what he gives to his Conley's team. on a better team. You could also yeah. take that in effect as well. But I mean, no, Kemba I think Con- Conley's the guy I never see him being able to take a game over. Yeah. Like, Kemba Walker is someone who, that's his thing. Like, he can take it to the extra gear. He has that, I want to say star power. I really do. Because in my mind, like, Mike Conley's not a star. It's nothing against him. Mm-hmm. He's just a He's very good player. Memphis. Yeah. I mean, I think that's one downside to Kemba and uh, Conley is that they're playing in Charlotte and Memphis. Those yeah. are media powerhouses there. No, no, absolutely true. But I think Kemba has the star quality. He has star power, and he has that star potential in his game to just absolutely take over games, become a dominant force. And, and I don't see that in Mike Conley. I think that, he, like you said, there's no negative to Mike Conley. He just doesn't have that extra it factor to his game that makes him better than other players. Like, like you said, he's mm-hmm. never going to win an MVP. He's never going to compete for one. Is he ever going to take his team deep in the playoffs and, because it's on his shoulders? No. Mm. But I could see Kemba Walker doing that. I can see Kemba being that guy who wills his team to victories. But he needs a better team around him. I yeah, no argument there. Him. Yeah. Um, and then looking at, at a guy like Kyle Lowry, a guy that has a decent team around him, a team in Toronto that's been consistently making the playoffs. Obviously, Kyle Lowry's been hurt, but he had one of his better years, best years, 
this year, but he didn't really take a jump up. Actually, fell down one spot. Is there anything with Kyle Lowry that you want to see this year that is going to put him up higher and, and probably put him into that Damian Lillard category, or do you think he's never going to take that because he doesn't have that flashiness to him? I think it's not in that question. It's not what I want to see from Kyle Lowry. It's what I want to see from the Raptors overall, because they were a team two years ago. We're like, man, they're trying to complete compete with the Cavaliers. And now it seems like that has shifted from the Raptors to the Celtics being that team that is going to compete, will be the one that people are like, man, if anyone's going to knock off the Cavs, I guess this is our best spot. So with me, I don't look at Kyle Lowry individually. I look more at that entire team, and I want to see more from the entire Raptor squad than just Kyle Lowry. I mean, outside DeMar DeRozan, there isn't really one. I mean, you have Serge Ibaka, mm-hmm. you yeah. have, uh, you have um, uh, Jonas Valachunas, you have... Uh, that man gets disrespected all day. Yeah, I, but he's not that good, though. <laughs> I know, I just think it's funny. He's always, like, scapegoat. Um, no, I, I, he's OG? 31. Yeah, Dude, that's, that, I think 31. that's the biggest thing. I mean, at the end of the day, you look at these point guards, the, he's, I think, it, Chris Paul's the oldest, but then it's down to him, so... Chris Paul is a transcendent player. Chris Paul was like the point guard. When you when you ask for a definition of point guard, you could just point to a picture of Chris Paul and be like that guy. Chris Paul's a Hall of Famer. That yeah, exactly. <laughs> that guy. And, and again, Kyle Lowry started late in his career mm-hmm. uh, when he hit his prime. So yeah, at 31, he's still playing at an excellent level. But like, there's no extra gear for him. He is, and that's fine. The problem is, like Ricky said, like he's not going to compete for a championship. And we asked this not right now. We asked this question with with the other ones. Who is most likely to fall out? Would it be Kyle Lowry because of his age? I think so. The only other guy who could fall out is possibly Mike Conley. I'd say Kemba Walker. And why is that? Because of the team around Basically him? Basically because of, yeah, I get the whole player that he's been where, like Dave said, he could put a team on his back. But if he doesn't have that team to put on his back, I could see somebody, maybe – even one of the rookies, one of the rookies, even someone from the just next just tell us which rookie, which, which rookie would you put? In. Either Dennis Smith or Ball or even Fultz. I mean, all three of them. You did could have potentially Ball be at ten top already. 10. You had Ball higher than Walker. I mean, he's the one that out of the three, I would say that's your best bet at being a top ten player at the end of this year. But I could see any of those rookies jumping if Bledsoe has a phenomenal year, if Dragic has a phenomenal year. I would look at Kemba being the one where you're on the cusp, and he might fall to 11, but that's still falling out. Yeah, I think one thing I think the guy that's going to take the biggest jump or can take the biggest jump is Kemba Walker. I just disagree with you completely. Mm-hmm. I think that he can take that jump. Um, even oh, you know, he can go I, either I, way. I don't he can know jump how, or fall. I don't know how how much Dwight Howard's going to help him, but I think that still he can, he can be helped. Um, I think that he's still going to be able to really push himself forward. Um, I think the guy that, you know, Kyle Lowry, I think he, he can definitely fall out. Also, Isaiah Thomas. I look mm-hmm. at Isaiah Thomas, and I don't know exactly what his role is going to be and how he's going to really thrive in the Celtics role. And and I, I don't think it's anything against Isaiah Thomas. And is this his Thomas. last year on the Celtics, too? Yeah, I don't think it's any well, for on his contract. We don't know if yeah. Yeah, he's going to bring him back Kyrie. or not. They can no. trade him. We don't know what's going to happen. Trade him. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, but with Isaiah Thomas, he is getting older and his game, maybe they find a way to stop him. I'm not saying Isaiah Thomas will, but I'm just saying I just want to throw another guy out there, um, mm-hmm. and I'll throw Isaiah Thomas out there. Because you look at Kyrie, he's still young. Dame's still young. Is there any chance anybody Chris... gets into the top two discussion, though? Like, do you top feel two? like No. Yeah, do you feel like John that's... Wall. Do you think John Wall can jump up on the same level of Brody and, and Steph Curry? I think so. <sighs> I, mean, I think... I think I don't think he's athletic as athletic as Russell Westbrook, but he's more tame than Russ. And he's I think so that he can, quick too. He, I think I think that John Wall can be a guy that can really hone his game and and really limit the turnovers, limit everything else, make and his team better. He's phenomenal. Yeah, too. make his team better, be great defensively, and he can overtake Russ. I don't think he's ever going to put up thirty two like Russ he, did, average a triple double like Russ did. But I don't think Russ is doing that this year. I think because the numbers fall. If anything, it might be a case where next year, instead of Steph and Westbrook, it might be at the best case for Wall. It might be Steph or Wall. I mean, the biggest the biggest gap between all of our numbers mm-hmm. here is is the two to three. Because mm-hmm. yep. right now, uh, uh, Russ has 88 points. John Wall has 82. Six-point difference there. And then besides well, that, it's a three-point three difference. We all had Steph and Russ either one or two. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, I'm, I'm saying, mm-hmm. like, the, 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 the determination between, yeah. like, three through seven— that's tougher than what we thought yeah. one through two, mm-hmm. and we both had Russ and Steph. I'm just saying, if anyone yeah. can, 
it's John Wall because of his athletic ability. Um, obviously, it's not up to the same level as Russ, mm-hmm. but I think that he does have probably the most athleticism out of all of these guys You know, uh, in the top 10. Um, and, and you look at John Wall, I just think that he, he does have that characteristic to become that guy to, to, to overtake it. I think we saw it this year, um, playing with a healthy Bradley Beal, seeing the improvement of Otto Porter. I think that he can be a guy that, that could take that jump if anyone's going to take that jump. So any other guys we want to mention in the top 10? No, not really. All right, I think well, we hit them all. It looks like it's going to wrap it up. Mike Conley is uh, is is a mystery. To Mr. Me. Consistency. Uh, Mr. Consistency staying. He's a pretty good nine. player. He's a pretty good player. Uh, we also talked about Mayonnaise, Jeff Teague, and we talked about uh, our favorite player in, in Malcolm Brogdon. Uh, we named a fucking award after him. Yep. Uh, so there are a lot of guys uh, that we talked about. Tell us your rankings down in the comments below. If you want to do 1 through 10, do 1 through 10. If you want to do 1 through 20, do 1 through 20. If you want to do 1 through 30, do 1 through 30. We're not expecting anything, uh, but definitely. <laughs> but if you do, you're the real MVP. You are the real MVP, so definitely leave your comments down in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you're listening on Block Talk Radio, thank you so much for the download. Thank you for listening to us on there. Anyways, boys, we will see you next week. Boys and girls and children of all ages. We'll see you next week. <laughs> for Dave Oster, for Ricky Whitmer, I'm Sean Anderson. We'll see you next time.